Cool. Okay, Sweet. I will Perfect. just stick to that then. Thanks, Marky. Oh, all good, Cheers, mate. Marky. Thanks, mate. Um, uh, right, what, is, what was he just saying he eats? Rogan, Rogan Josh. Josh. No. Producer Mark is... Uh, sorry, guys. Welcome to episode seven. No. No? Eight. Number eight. eight. Numero eight. <laughs> we did have to... Uh, this is the second time filming number eight, just we had some technical difficulties with the old audio, so... Boom, we're on. <laughs> I think we're on. Yeah. So. Anyway, guys, welcome to episode eight of the Buggy Mead Watches podcast. Indeed. Um, joined again by Josh, co-host friend and... Um, oh, Bunjuna Mead. Co-host friend and colleague. Yeah, you um, think we're eight episodes deep. Still <coughs> we're getting eight used episodes to deep. Microphones. We are getting better at this podcasting thing. Well, I'll tell you what. It's, you... More, it's, it's more a... a sorry, I'm just going to turn my phone off. Yeah, please um, do. It's more a venting um, podcast for me now. Yeah, it's just pet it's peeves. less and less about watches and more and more about... Just hour-long pet peeves. Shit, that annoys me. Yeah. Like. Well, it is interesting. Have you gone back to watch the older podcasts? No, nah, I've never went back. So, uh, I actually did this week. I went back and I watched I episode. hate watching myself, mate. I can't, I can't watch old podcasts. Well, think about it. At least you don't have to do the editing. So, I can't watch it. As soon as it goes live on a Thursday, I'll just wash my hands of it. I'm like, right, yeah. on to the next one. Trying to plan the next one. But um, I did actually go back and I didn't watch the full ones, but I watched segments of it. Episode one, two, and three, fucking horrible, right? Terrible. Yeah, stuff. And then episode four, we were kind of, well, I was kind of running out of things to like plan. So, I was just like, right, fuck it. We're going to try that. Scottish accent thing yeah, yeah yeah and at that point I was just like well we'll just roll that was a good punches. play from you to be fair because that blew up on TikTok yeah and I think <laughs> that's actually what made us maybe change a little bit so that was the shift where it was like actually what we're doing is pretty good so then you can you be relaxed I think about, like, it's, and... you need to try and make it like a conversation mm. but I talk to you every fucking day of my life mate yeah. so actually having a conversation with you is dead easy but you need to not think about actually trying to be and a certain way because there's a camera filming you, you just yeah. need to be just and I mean we've always said it we're going to try and talk on this podcast about things that we want to talk about I mean obviously yeah. there's elements of watches cars clothes because that is what we actually talk about but where our conversations go we'll try and bring that into the old world of podcasts as well world so, of podcasting, yeah. um, but where to kick off we've had another crazy week um, yeah so we are actually filming this podcast um, <laughs> on the 24th of April which is the day before that it goes live Usually the scheduling goes, we film it the week before it goes live, so we should have been filming this seven yeah. days ago. We did film it seven days ago, but unfortunately the sound corrupted. Yeah, dodgy and, sound. Um, and, and, it, and, and it's, I don't know, whatever happened, so producer Mark got a wee slap in the wrist. And, uh, sorry, excuse me, we're in today to... to Do a little bit around two. But listen, yeah. these things happen, so there's, um, there's worse things going on in the world. <laughs> Amen, <laughs> brother. <laughs> There's worse things going on Amen. in the world. So listen, nah, I, but I, we re-record the podcast and another chance to vent my problems and issues that I've got with the world is... Not all bad. I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah, that. it's not all bad. Um, but no, crazy week. It was uh, actually started quite... So we're actually talking about week commencing... Last week. Yeah, so it yeah, would have been sorry. like 17th or the 18th. Yeah. Or so. um, started a little bit flat, I must add. So um, we came in on, on the, the Monday. On the Monday, yeah. Now, Mondays we do actually try and do a little bit of computer time, screen time. You yeah. know, we update all of our data daily, but... Monday's the big one because you catch up over the weekend. Um, all the social media stuff, you kind of plan for the week. Um, so Monday's always kind of that sort of day. And then how the rest of the week cut is just how we kind of get thrown. Um, but yeah, Monday was just flatter than usual, right? I mean, you were waiting on, you, you go into... Listen, so, some weeks, the, the, the problem with working, I mean, it's, it's a blessing and a curse, right? Working for um, being your own boss. Yeah. Um you're responsible for your own motivation. So you're a human being. Some days you're going to have bad days. Some days you're going to have good days. Some days you're going to wake up and feel a bit drained because of things that are going on in your life out with your work. Yeah, sure. um, Some days you're going to wake up and you're going to feel good because you're having a positive day and whatever. So sometimes on the days that you're maybe feeling a bit down and you're feeling a bit stressed about certain other things that are going on in your life, you know, it's it's difficult to motivate yourself to get up and fucking go to work because work is stressful <coughs> like people we'd well, rather just deal with the problems you got going on and then on top of it you have to go and deliver yeah, to and, keep and that's where I turning. think I, you bring great value Thanks, because mate. in previous years without you being on board you know probably some of those days I would have just buried my head in the sand and and dinged my phone all day and 
whatever. But I know that when you're coming to pick me up at eight o'clock in the morning, so I know that like my day starts at eight. So yeah. regardless of what you've, you've got, got to get up on, and get it, I've got to get up and be ready and good to yeah. go by eight o'clock. So um, that's re- there's real value in that for me. But you know, so we had a bit of a mad week last week. Monday was a bit shit. I was just feeling a bit crap about just life in general has been a bit tough the last couple of months and um we as the kind of week went on basically what had happened was committed to buying kind of four or five watches a couple from clients and a couple from other traders and um i was waiting on a payment coming in that had apparently been sent on like the 12th or the 11th or something payment then never arrives and that then has but, a knock but on also effect. we're talking about you know, this one particular watch was yeah, it was a big, of significant big number. It was amount a big, of money. Six figures, right? So you're, you're waiting on that money coming in to then ensure that you can go and buy those other watches to make those other deals happen. And any watch dealer um, worth their weight and salt is always spinning plates and juggling. Yeah. You know, let's say they've got a hundred grand to use; they're using ninety nine thousand of it at all times to maximize the amount of money that yeah. they can make. So, um, but then also on that as well, something that's teed up to be so good, like you know, selling a six-figure watch it doesn't happen every day. It's something that's so good and you feel so good about it that when, you know, there might be a delay in payment or you don't have payments coming in, all that other stuff, it then tarnishes it and what should be a really good positive experience yeah. becomes a bit of a shit one. Yes, and what you've got to remember is, like, liquidity and cash flow in this business is king and everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's trying to maximise yeah. the, the use of the money that they've got to, to make sure that they can earn as much money as possible. So that's what you're doing at all times. So... Sometimes if you don't get that payment in, it can then have a knock-on effect. <clears throat> Basically, woke, woke up on Wednesday morning with, I think, 400 quid in the account and I had six watches to buy. And I think, I mean, you came round and I was just like, mate, like, <laughs> I am do. like <laughs> I've got watches to buy for customers that are coming down tomorrow. I don't have any money to buy them. I've got, you know, watches to buy from customers that I yeah. promised them that I'm going to go and meet them today. I'm now going to have to potentially delay it all to happen and I had zero money, but actually, I don't know how, you know, I managed to do it, but we we, we managed to get all the deals done, get the watches in, get the watches out, get the watches down for customers and managed to get it all done in one day. Well, I mean, in we fact, it from, was, it was polar, the kind of polar opposite. It went 360. We then ended yeah. up being able to then get out of watches, get all the other money and then the money still come landing so yeah. actually we ended up better than better off than we were be- yeah exactly and i think that is where i commend you yeah commend's the right word yeah i think that's where i commend you you know you can turn things around probably like i've never seen before yeah. um you know that that started at zero and within yeah. 12 hours it went to 100 pretty quick and then by friday it was up fucking yeah i mean bought and sold like seven or eight watches between the, the between Wednesday morning and Friday afternoon. So but in, in really, that as well. It, really, really, but it was a struggle. Like, it was difficult, mate, and it's stressful. And and why we're talking about this is, you know, you sent, you sent me a text, didn't you? On a, I did, yeah. You sent me a text on... A, and if anybody follows my personal account, you will have seen that I um, posted it on my personal account. But um, I'm just going to read you out the text. Actually, I was actually a wee bit emotional when you sent me the message. <laughs> to be completely honest, I was quite emotional. But... Um, yeah, one sec, blah, blah, blah. So Josh messaged me this on um, on Thursday night. You know, I'm just thinking about it, mate. I don't think you actually get enough credit for what you do, to be honest. But at the same time, I suppose you can't fully explain what it is you actually do day to day. Even the way you bounce back this week, it's fucking highly impressive and I'm proud of you. So that was like, when you sent me that message, I was it was kind of a weird moment for me because I think probably for the last three or four years my work has been as stressful as it's been full stop and that's because I've got more responsibilities I'm dealing with higher watch higher priced watches yeah. there's more stress involved there's more money involved you know the, the levels of risk are way higher than they ever have been and it affects you emotionally it affects you yeah. mentally it affects your mood it affects everything so people look at you're you on social media or me on social media and you go oh this guy's living this spectacular life but don't see what actually goes into reality no one actually sees it and yeah i think that's a massive has probably affected me a lot in past relationships and whatever else that you know no one actually sees what my work is like yeah, on a daily sure. basis and i think you probably didn't realize that until you started working but 100 percent. i mean i used to 
there's a, there's a lot I probably didn't realize when we were pals and I, I didn't really know what it is day to day. I mean, for instance, I used to be at my desk on a Tuesday afternoon and I was like corporate. So the idea of me getting up and leaving my desk, he yeah, used to text me and being like, oh, bro, do you want to go and play golf Tuesday, three o'clock? And I'm like, absolutely not, mate. I'm chained to my desk. Yeah. So I used, almost used to be there like, fuck's sake, this guy does very little work, yeah, reaps all the rewards. Like, am I fuck gonna say well done to you? Like, well done for what? Like, yeah, someone exactly. tell me well done. I'm here fucking being miserable, but you're there living the life. So, at the same time, I get why. Like, when I sent that text, you said, "Mate, no one really says well done to me." Yeah, that's what I was. That, that's what I was meaning. Like, and and the realization for me when I got that when you sent me that text is, I was like, he gets it. Yeah, and and you were the, you're the first person, and not even just saying this, but for the last ten years, that understands what it's like, and that's not a. That's not me throwing shade on people that have known me in the past no. and been close enough to me to understand what my life work sure. is like. But you really understand it now because you've worked here for six or seven months. So you understand what goes yeah. in on the daily, but like how much hard work it is, how difficult it can be sometimes, how rewarding it can be sometimes, yeah. but how much consistency and hard work goes into getting the business to the point where <clears throat> it makes sense yeah. and it yeah, works. Yeah. So when I was reading that text, I thought, fuck, like he you're the first person to tell me well done for 10 years. And I think... I think and the first person who goes, I, he, I'm like, he understands. Yeah. It was like a realisation moment for me that in relationships of mine in the past or whatever that I've had, no one's ever said to me well done. Like, you've done a good job. And because they've, they, they just see the, the surface level. Yeah. They don't see all the stress and everything else that goes on in the background and, and all the, the hard things you're you're making happen that really have no business in happening. Yeah, yeah. And the connections you're making from this guy to this guy to make this happen in the middle and all of those things, no one has a clue because you're just working on your phone. Yeah, yeah. So then when you get a well done from someone who is living it with you, it hits home and you think, wow, like... That's... Yeah. And, I, and I, I think that's partly what maybe I've been searching for for a long time as like someone to understand how difficult it can be sometimes yeah. and come from a place of saying do you know what like well done like you that was like, i don't know how you done that today but you fucking done it yeah and that was the biggest realization for me and i think that was it i think it was thursday night i was just sad i was actually cleaning the flat and i like hadn't lifted my phone in ages and the week had been that crazy i was like, i'm just gonna get in and i just like i want to just clean i just want to clear my head and all i'm thinking about is like the week and i'm just like how the fuck has this guy done this for the last 11 years? All right, yeah. sure, the, the business has scaled. But I'm just like, that was, like, we obviously can't really tell people about the deals we do, the people we deal with. We can say a little bit, but not a lot. So people probably don't realise what really goes into it. And I think that's why I'm sat there and I'm just like, fuck, this is like, we, we're building an empire. Um, yeah, and it's, it, sounds, it sounds a bit cliche and a bit soppy, but... You know, like be, being completely honest, like receiving a message like that was massive for me. Like it just, I was like, it was like a weight was lifted off my shoulders because I was like, finally someone understands. Yeah. Like, I, but again, I think you as well need to realize this is coming from like a friend. I think you need to realize like what you've achieved as well. I don't think you give yeah. yourself enough credit. It's, it's it, difficult. You're not going to blow smoke up. You know no, I know, saying? but it's like just look where you've come from at the same time. Like, look at what you've already built. You know, look at what you're buying. You look at what you drive. Look at the house you live in. You know you've done fucking well yeah. and I think at the same time you don't give yourself a lot of credit I think you you as well you try and be like right well what's the next thing you get something right well what what can I, I, I do I, to I feel like that's a bit of a curse of, of our generation yeah 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 because for sure you're constantly surrounded by success and people who are doing better than you so of course yeah naturally as an ambitious person you're always trying to level up, level up, yeah. level up, level up. When in reality, if you just stood back and looked at it from a an outsider's perspective, someone might go, "Fuck, like, like, well done, like you've fucking done so well to get to this point." But, but, but it's, as I said, I've said before, no, no one's ever been in a position that that you've been in for the last six months where, you where you've it, you lived live it day to day and yeah. you understand it. So, yeah. actually, hearing it from someone who who has seen behind the curtain a little bit, is, yeah. it almost means more than, than anything else. No, nah, so. no, I'm proud of you as well, brother. Thanks, like, honestly, I am genuinely very, very proud of you. No, nah, that's um, And I mean, like you say, there, there's always people that we both look up to, but I think the the texts that you receive through the DMs, through on, on all platforms, there's a lot of kids trying to be like you as well. And I think that's, that should be super flattering and that again should like hit home with... Yeah, I, it's, it's... The problem with this industry is it's it's... 
it's littered with success stories that have no negative stories within them. Yeah. It's, we came from nothing, now we've got 10 million quid worth of watches. Yeah, but how? Yeah, they're just... What happened in between? Like, bullshit. how did you get there? Like, what? There's no reality to it. So the problem with generations younger than us is that they see this constant success and they don't understand the stress and the difficulty and the consistency you need yeah. to get to that point. Mm -hmm. They just see success and say, and they go, how did he get there? He sells watches. I want to start selling watches, which I understand. Like it's, it's a normal, it's a normal, you know, we would step. have had those thoughts. Yeah. Exactly. But you know, the reason for this podcast and the reason for, for that is just to Be bring honest. a bit of honesty into the yeah. situation. Like it's not all fucking rainbows and fucking, do you know what I mean? And fucking rose de tonas. It's, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes it's <laughs> it's stressful and That's what like, it is. you can yeah. be happy one minute, sad the next, and it has effects in your personal life as well. It's affected relationships that I've had in the past, probably negatively, and you take bad work days out on ones closest to you, and sometimes, you know, it's difficult for your partner or your girlfriend or your mum and dad or whatever to understand what that actually looks like on a day-to-day -day basis for you, but... You know, obviously, since you've been on board, you understand it, so it's great, but it's just good. So, someone behind the curtains is always good. Exactly. Anyway, we should no, really build on with the podcast. I mean, we're because it's getting a bit emotional. That's going to be a pain in the cut to try and clip. Uh, where do we even take it from here? I mean, like you say, it's been a bit of a chaotic week. Maybe we just, like, what watches have we got in stock? I think that's a good place. Like, what, what, oh, what new mate, bits have we got? I, honestly, because... I've got stock coming out of my ears at the moment and, and absolutely zero cash. Um, <laughs> uh, but loads, mate. Rose de Tona, um, Oyster Flex, you new know. reference, old Rose de, Rose de Tona, Oyster Flex, old reference, both are brand new. Sprite, um, two Starbucks, Rose GM. I mean, there's Hulk, the list goes on. Batman. You know, Cl Cartier Claws, Hulk, Batman. We've also got in, yeah. AP15510, oh, 2640ST. Yeah. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and so on. If anyone's looking for watches, we've probably got it. Yeah, um, we've probably got most things at the moment. Um, but, but actually, do you know what? St the stuff's coming in, stuff's going out. Aye, the wheels are, are fully turning. The wheels are turning, which is great. So um, long bad, may it bad. continue. And do you know what? I feel like every time I get a bit of bad luck in my life, I've always said this, like, from years and years and years ago, right? Um, like, every time something bad happens to me, good things happen. More good things happen, right? Yeah, like, sometimes when something bad happens to me, I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, generally, I'm quite a worrier at heart, but... Um, good things always happen after so yeah. like that's just sometimes that's the way i look at it now like if, shit, if i've lost money doing that or i've lost money doing this then like good things always come after so yeah like it's it's one of those situations you just need to take the, the bad ones on the chin and, and roll with on. the punches a little bit yeah man because not everything's going to be good exactly right let's uh let's push it i actually have no do you have a time on that i've no idea where we're um at. i think we've been doing it for about 20 minutes all right we'll just freestyle then <clears throat> uh, Big weekend, actually, well, it feels like fucking four years ago, but, you know, we're just keeping up. Watches and Wonders. Watches and Wonders. Yeah. Right, Watches and Wonders happen. So what we're going to do, um, I don't want you to just jump into it. Um, yeah. We're going to give like overall thoughts. Maybe we'll break into a couple of the brands. We'll talk about Patek. We'll talk about Rolex. Um, but there's obviously quite a lot of new watches that get released by the brands so maybe i'll just jump into a couple of new models you tell me a bit of a yay or nay shit or unbelievable or yep. just give me your thoughts about it right you with me yeah sorry i'm just replying um so i suppose the big watch that everyone's talking about is the new gmt that's coming out so it's the black yeah. and the gray one the bruce wayne is that oh for fuck's sake? It's got a name already. So people are calling it. Yeah. Jesus. Christ. I don't know where these names come from. No, do I? I will give up sometimes. What a pish. What do I, <laughs> what do I think about it? Oh, uh, Bruce Wayne. <sighs> Meh. Meh. Bog Meh. standard. It'll be cheaper than Batgirls and Pepsi's and. Yeah, and I mean maybe I could have done a bit more research, right? But I've got some references here. I might fucking butch them. Might might not make any sense. But let's just freestyle. Uh, the fifty-one sixty-four blue aquanaut. 5164G white gold. Yeah, cool. Amazing. It will sell really well because it's blue and everything blue with Patek sells well. Yep. Packs. Cool watch. Uh, jumped into this in another podcast, so it's not really a new release, but the day date, the rose with the black dial. Yeah, dead. Mm. Ombre dial or something that's called. Some nonsense. Smoke dial or something. Dead. Yep. 
in my opinion. I, I just don't like Rose watches with dark dials. No, I know. It makes no sense. Rose should have a light dial, in my opinion. Yeah, just makes everything so much darker. Yeah. Uh, the Denim Nautilus, is that the 5980? 59... white yeah. gold. Mark Wahlberg has got one already. Early plug. Honestly, mate. Every night I say a prayer to get his Patek plug. <laughs> <laughs> he gets everything first <laughs> yeah. before anyone he's the first guy with it it's, yeah. rid it's like ridiculous the thing gets released two weeks later he's got it yeah, he's probably actually had it for a while as well that's one of the coolest watches I think that's been released in the last few yeah. years I mean we actually spoke nailed about it, it on I think I've nailed it again probably like the first or second podcast it's cool to see brands doing something so different like a denim norm. strap yeah it's, I don't know if it's denim or it's more like an RM strap Right, a kind of little looks thing. like denim and it's cool as fuck. You know where people would be, it would look good. Where people would be like rocking that. Yeah, like like the making us like beach clubs and white shirts on. Yeah, flowy trousers, Hermes sandals, big dick energy. Yeah. yeah, I wonder how much they'll be in the market. They're probably sixty odd grand to buy. Yeah, list will probably be one twenty five, one thirty, one forty, maybe one fifty for the first ones that come out and they might sell somewhere between one twenty and one. Cool watch. Hopefully we get one in stock. Cool watch. White gold. Would you give over a hundred grand for that watch? Really? I don't know. What screams is in my head, value wise for that watch? A hundred grand. Yeah. Yeah, I can see. Kinda that. where I see it. Yeah. Um the Patek 5520RG, which is the alarm travel time, which has the four gigantic buttons. The one that looks like a pilot. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be a floppy as well. It looks like an alien with all the fucking yeah. pushes sticking out of it. Teletubbies was that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it looks shy. It's just too big. Too big yeah. for most people. Yeah. So the pilot range from Patek is the blackmail range. That's <laughs> the pilot pilot watches from Patek are used to blackmail customers to spend more money. Go on, give me an example. Ones. You be my Patek. Uh, I walk uh, in. Hi, welcome, sir. Um, can I help you? Yes, I'm looking for the 5980 in the the denim shirt, please. Oh yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, that that's a, a, a waiting list piece, and and we've got you know hundreds of of very high spending customers that are on the richer bastards than you that are on the list for that piece. Um, so... Would you like a pilot? <laughs> we, we could offer you, you know, we could potentially offer you s some other watches that we, we have in stock. Um, don't know if you'd be interested in this £40,000 pilot that's worth 18 grand. Mm. Mm. But if you do buy this, and then you buy a ladies one at 35 grand that's worth 22 and you lose thirty thousand pounds, then we might consider putting you on the list, but you still wait three years or four or five, maybe. I'll take it. It yeah. sounds it sounds bloody good to me. So they are the blackmail watches. Yeah. Um every brand really that has waiting lists has blackmail watches. For Patek, it's the pilots and the um Oh why is that the the name of them just went right out of my head. The um Common leather straps. I can't believe I've forgotten the name of them. Max has got one. Oh. Calatrava? Calatrava, well done. Hey! Good. Um, Calatravas and pilots are used to blackmail customers from yeah. Patek. Max, you've got a cool Calatrava. Don't listen he does. to, his to is the nice, haters. His is the nicest one, to be fair. But yeah. um, uh, he's also tarted his up with a cool strap. So to be fair, his is cool. But yeah. um, they are the blackmail watches from Patek. The blackmail watches from Rolex are Sky Dwellers and Oyster Flick straps. Yeah, shit watch. 34, 35 grand list, you'll lose 10 grand straight away. They're just ginormous watches, aren't they? That's, do you know what? Hi, would you like to buy well, we'll jump. We'll jump into that. Rose Sky Dweller with the black doll with Jubilee bracelet. That's what's The watch is too big for the bracelet. Yeah, I agree it's with that. It's too chunky a watch for that bracelet. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at historically 36 mil steel and gold references, um, date justs on Jubilee bracelets, like, over time, those worn, like, they look like shit. Yeah. So, can you imagine what a, the biggest watch in the Rolex, well, not anymore since they released that, those deep seas, but like one of the biggest watches in the Rolex collection in gold is now on a Jubilee bracelet. Imagine if someone wears that f every day for five years. Imagine what it'll look like. Oof. Be hanging like that. Oh, lock off, I. Do you know what I mean? Need so, some Viagra on that strap. Know, mate, listen, yeah. the, the, the full rose, I mean, a couple of, the, obviously the Blue Dial does well, but, I mean, the other ones are 
pretty. Yeah. The, the watches are too big in general for most people, so they don't really sell that well unless it's a super rare dial like the blue one. Mm. But a bit of a dead watch, to be honest, I think. One I quite like that I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about is the 1908. Yeah, that's so it's the, the one that looks a bit like a Cellini with a blue dial. Yeah, cr- yeah, yeah, blue strap, blue leather cool strap. Watch probably fly under the radar, might be collectible in fifteen years' time. Yeah, no, I quite like it. Um, when I say this, don't jump into the story. We'll, we'll touch on the story in a minute. Okay. Uh, but the yellow gold Le Mans Daytona. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, cool watch. But they, they're limited numbers. So, yeah, um, they'll be given to. 150 of the 80s favourite people mm-hmm. and, and that'll be it that'll be it uh, and they'll be made probably for a year the 5330G world time so that's the Patek with kind of the checkerboard dial yeah I can't actually remember what that looks like I think it's again it's the blue one I can dun, 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 dun. you just talk get to the people up. I'm going to get oh, one 5330G yeah so and in future maybe I will try and see so if we can gold. yeah it's uh, let's have a look. But it's that new one that's come out, so it's not got the photos. It'll be that, but it's like that blue one. Oh, yeah. World times are cool. I I had a world time until about. Oh, it was cool. a month ago. Yeah, world times are cool, but I, again, it it'll be it'll be big big money to retail that. Yeah, as hey, all uh, Pateks are. Your favorite watch, uh, the gold deep sea. Oh my god! Do you know what's stainless steel in the back? Gold deep sea, yellow gold deep sea. It's just a massive version of a. Um, 11661.8 LB, which is if I don't, if you don't know, I don't know. I think that's the right reference. Um, which is the yellow gold Samariner with the blue dial. It's just a massive version of that, which will be the biggest flop ever. You know, the retail price for that's over 40 grand. Yeah, I think it's 47, 47,750 or some bollocks. It's, it's a deep sea made for diving who the fuck would dive with a yellow gold watch who wants it in yellow gold no kind of fishes might appreciate it Um, one that is a bit of you it's the 5738 which is that gold chain style Patek oh yeah it looks a bit like a Bangalore Cartier yeah yeah cool watch yeah I thought you'd like that with like the black doll I like that watch kind of dinty yeah it's cool and last one I've got is the 597 diamond Daytonas that Patek are releasing Patek really oh, sorry Rolex I do like the yellow gold one yeah it's the first time they've made a gem set yellow gold on a full bracelet for a long time but apart from the rainbow Daytona that they released in the previous generation um, that'll be very cool because it's set like a rainbow Daytona but they're all white diamonds yeah I think that'll be cool the rose one's cool as well but they're over 100 grand last so I don't know if they're going to be Reselling. If they're going to potentially be off catalogue pieces, are they going to be on catalogue? Are you going to be able to order them? Are you not going to be able to order them? And for the people at home, what does off catalogue really mean? <laughs> so like the SACO that we have in stock, yeah, 16519 SACO, which is the Oyster Flex yellow gold detoner with the orange, orange sapphire dial and the orange sapphire bezel, that does not exist in a Rolex catalogue. So you can't op- open up a Rolex book and see that in there. Yeah, You have to be offered that watch from Rolex and there's a few so there's a last year they released a white gold Daytona full bracelet with a ruby bezel diamond shoulders shall I go and let him in oh is it the buzzer aye ah okay producer Mark must be lacked to it just leave it that's it um, so yeah they released the white gold one last year which is cool but it's off catalogue so you, you you have to be offered the watch before you can yeah. buy it, basically so you won't you can't just walk in and say aye. can I get that yeah so that's why an off catalogue. But we do have a very beautiful Sacco Daytona um, yeah. in stock. So anyone looking for a very rare watch that is off catalogue. We do have a Sacco, yeah. Nice watch. Beautiful, beautiful watch. Bloody hell. Jesus Christ. Got much. Just go and take it off the hook. I might just push it. Um, oh, Domino's. Um, do I smell? Do you smell? Mm. No. I'm not wet <laughs> <laughs> no anyway continue cause we're, <laughs> we're pushing on now oh, we are. Um, but we will kind of give a bit of a overview of watches and wonders um, what were your thoughts on how Rolex performed at watches and wonders um, well they obviously released about 836 mil day dates so they must see the pod <laughs> oh fuck off mate just take it off the hook I'm mate. just gonna just take it off the hook Josh it won't buzz. There you go. Leave it. Is that not? Oh, 
Uh, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Who is that? Okay, mate, I'll be calm. Who is that? An old cunt. <laughs> <laughs> This pod just gets better and better. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Uh, Rolex at uh, Watch uh, Yeah, so they released about thirty, about 836 mil day date references. So they must see a trend in small watches coming back. Maybe they just they listen to... The, they must watch the podcast. Aye, that's what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've swamped the market again with 36 mil day dates like anyone's interested in them. Anyway, um, why would you buy a... 30 odd grand 36 mil day date when you can get a vintage yeah. one for 15 that looks fucking just the same and look the watch market is now probably got more eyes on it than ever before so people watch the wonders probably it's never been such it's never been a bigger event than what it is now I think that's the platform to really like start doing some show stopping pieces they have the ability to do some spectacular stuff yeah. but they just never really do it yeah it's just very flat it's so um, flat or even like just do something. I mean, I, am... I don't know if that's just because your expectation of the brand is so high that yeah. maybe no matter what they release, it would always be a letdown. Mm, I'm not. I'm not sure. So it was even like there was obviously all that fucking nonsense going on about the Pepsi. Oh, you're going to get discontinued. This that. No one ever knew. Anyway, prices fucking rocketed. That's what watch dealers make that create that. I know. Well, it's not anyone else. that was then holding on to the fucking Pepsi's, fuck you. <laughs> um, all of a sudden they were 15 grand to buy pu- from Indies lies. and then all of a sudden they're 15 grand to buy yeah. because 16 grand to buy now people are selling them for 18 grand a guy off me one day 18 five. I said mate are you smoking crack what do you think like, what do you mean 18 yeah. five. I like, shut up I never even buy them it's so shit. so this is this is what I mean like I just that's watch dealers that do that They, but again they could, yeah sure they could have discontinued something and gone to the archives like the coke whatever I think that would have been a bit of a Woo. No, they need be? to release a new model. Yeah, or just a new model. Well, they got the 1908. What they need to do but... is release a new model that's a home run. Like a, a new sports model. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It's like, um, rather than just fucking reinventing the wheel every year. Like, yeah. oh, a new GMT with a different coloured bezel, or a new Daytona. Like, p- put your balls on the table and bring out something new. Mm. That Get your balls out, gonna, Rolex. That people are going to love or hate. Mm. Um, and then just as we pass over work, Rolex. It's not like people are going to fucking stop buying Rolex. Yeah. They're too investable these days. Exactly. Um, and just before we pass over Rolex, we will jump into the Le Mans Daytona story because we have got a bit of a crazy one from that. Sick of people calling that a discontinued watch, mate. <laughs> it's why... Because why, why they were that. limited numbers anyway. Aye. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they were made for 1,500 years or 15 minutes. They've been only making so many. There's X amount of watches in circulation. So they're not yeah. discontinued. Yeah. They were always going to get to the end of the production, whatever the numbers are, 160, 170, 180 watches, yeah. like limited numbers. Whatever that number was in Lotus's head, like but, they were always going to get to the end of production. They're not discontinued. No, no. Yeah. No, not no like I hear you Production said. for five years, no one yeah. knows. Like, they were always limited anyway. And the same thing will happen with the yellow golds, but... We quoted a customer on one, didn't we? Yeah, we had a request. Three or four days be- before um, before Watches and Wonders happened and we quoted them 160 grand on it, which was a fair price. Which is actually was still below market, then, I think. He was like, they're not too expensive and then came back to us a few days later and said, oh, mate, well, they've been discontinued. Now can you price me up? And we it was costing us over 200. The cheapest one. So that's like a 20, 25% increase in the space of four or five four days, days just from one thing. So Should have bought the watch. Just going to show you. If you've got well, the finger not- on the pulse, then you know, you could really have earned 40 or 50 grand in that space of those three days. 10 grand a day, nay bad. Um, Patek, jump into Patek. Obviously, we just listed off a few of the Pateks. I would just released. quickly like to say that the new Aquanaut the, with the blue sapphires and the diamonds and the dial. Yeah. Here for that. Yeah. It's like a checkered board. It's like gem set. Dial. Yeah, what on was a blue, that? On a blue strap. I think I've got that here Nice somewhere. watch. Uh, blue sapphire ombre. Aquanaut, the 5268, I think, is the reference to that watch. Not sure. We need to check that. Yeah, fact check that. Um, but you think Patek won on the old Watches and Wonders? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I they think. Just, they they release, like, it's, um, what's, what's, what am I trying to say? Like, it's, they don't release a lot, but when they do release a lot, do, do they things, release? The things they do release, it's like, yeah. qu- it's quality over quantity with Patek, whereas I think sometimes Rolex is quantity over quality. Aye. Aye. Which is effectively basically how the both brands sit in the marketplace. Patek is just, you know, we we sold a Patek today and it's theatre. 
We'll talk about it maybe on the next pod because we'll it wasn't just a party. Pod, it's theatrical. It was like, a party. Yeah, it was a big boy. Big uh, boy watching that. Uh, but when you just when you open the box and you've got the cloth and you've got the, the beautiful interior of the box yeah. and you've got the wooden box and it's like an enameled and it's got the stamp on the top and then you, you open it up and the beautiful watch is in there and little pins in there and the tag yeah. and you've got the leather wallet and it's just special. Well, it I, feels like yeah. an occasion, especially to a client. Feels like an occasion, whereas a Rolex, you know, you go into some of these watch dealers' offices, mate, and they're taking clients in there. They've got a fucking stack of boxes from the floor mm-hmm. to the ceiling, the three hundred Rolex boxes in the corner. How is that special for someone yeah. coming in? Oh, I just, I just fling it over one of those boxes. We we'll stick it in there. Yeah. It's like, it's like a like a shoebox. Yeah. Rolex is like in comparison to get back to what they had before. Yeah. Like Beach Daytona is like yeah, yeah, yeah. Those references like like I remember selling a white gold. Sorry, I remember selling a platinum ladies date just years ago to a client, right? It's like 26 mil thing, weighed a ton. You should have seen the box that came in, mate. This big blue leather box had a gold key. Oh, sick. Interior was all like ice blue felt. It was like beautiful box. Like, honestly, Rolex need to get back to that. Yeah, I agree. So far to fuck away from these <laughs> general boxes that just go from that size to that size depending on how much you spend. Yeah, facts. Like, a bit more... Bit, like imagine the lemon box you bought a lemon and it came in a black like ceramic fucking some cool carbon black, fiber like yeah you know what i mean and it had like something like a wee letter from something about lemon and it had like yeah. some details of the watch and it was inscribed like number one of nah they're just going like, there's a card box. there's a watch there's a couple of tags and there's a booklet there you go bob's your mm. uncle see you later there's a 50 quid box out the door they need to get back to, to, to making Nonsense. it a bit more of an occasion but we'll uh, we'll go back into. Mark's just come back and double check the sound just to make sure it's not <laughs> just to make sure it's not corrupted again. Uh, where do we go from here? Maybe Mark was actually I think he was farting into the mic the last time. We were, <laughs> I think that's probably why the, the fact he's giggling me. That's, that's, probably, all. that's probably what sparked the sound. All the farting he's been doing into the mic. <laughs> I wonder what I had pink eye the week after. Uh, but we'll jump into some pet peeves. We are running out of time. Um, I had the pleasure of going to watch William play football uh, at some point last week. Can't yeah, remember you what fucking day. Anywhere, you early. Uh, and uh, it was actually sandwiched between two appointments. So I actually met a client. It was like six o'clock. And then oh, yeah, my sure. next so client did, visit was like half past eight oh, in the evening. Oh, you tell a story about, about that, what happened actually afterwards. Okay, remember? well, I'll say the pet peeve and then we'll go into the story. So yeah. anyway, there was this, this little time in between my two appointments where I was just like, right, he's actually down the road. I'm just going to go watch him play football. Uh, and I had the pleasure of, uh, when I was younger, playing a pretty good level. One thing I could, I've never understood for the 30 years of of been living in this world, ankle socks with football boots. Yeah. Actually... Because all the black bits get in your feet. I just think it looks fucking awful. Yeah, it looks Like, different. it looks shite. I agree. You're wearing like even people wear like the ankle boots with like the sock on it, but then they're wearing ankle socks with the boot. Yeah, it looks awful, doesn't it? Like no, <laughs> no good footballer has ever ever walked up to any football competition <laughs> with ankle socks. Um, but yeah, that was another crazy day of last week. So we had we do we collect a watch that day to then deliver to the what? Yeah, I don't so even collected remember. The, it. the Oyster Fights to turn a new reference one two uh, six that, five one yeah. five yeah five one nine, five one five. Rose the toner, um, black dials, rose sub dials, cool watch. Deliver, that, that you got back from London, sorry, Birmingham. That hi, that's right, yeah. At five o'clock, you delivered the watch at seven o'clock. I was playing football half seven to half eight. We then met a guy in town at nine who travelled down from Aberdeen, um, and he bought a Santos, Santos Dumont. Dumont actually, which we ended up selling like four or five of after that video. But um, he, we were then driving along the road and we seen this homeless guy who. Sits outside Aesop in England Street in Glasgow. I don't know if anyone knows it, but he sits and he's got um, big duvet. He's got a duvet. Over. I feel sorry. For, like, and it time. was cold as fuck that yeah, night. It was, cold. It was really I cold. Him every time, and I, I had like only had like a tenner on me or twenty quid or something. And I said to Josh, jump out and give him that. Like, I feel fucking awful. Like, it puts your life in perspective sometimes. Yeah. Like when you see we just got off the back it, of this fortunate idea, yeah. and then he jumped out and gave him it. He just kind of looked up and went, "Thanks." And and I ran over away. and I was just like, yeah, mate. You were like, you jumped in the car a wee bit, like, disappointed. Not that you do it for a reaction. No, I know. But... This was actually was on my list of pet peeves. Do you know what? It's a massive pet peeve for me. See, people that go and give unfortunate people money and film it. 
Did people do that? Aye, like people like, oh, Aye, you're oh, a waste they're like, oh, here's like a hundred dollars, here's a new pair of trainers, and they're like filming it. Like, uh, if, yeah. if you want to go and do it, just go and do it. Yeah, no. Nah. You know I mean, and it, if you're donating to charities, yeah, always do it anonymously. And I, I got back in the car and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say how I feel about this matter, and, and William's probably gonna think I'm a twat, and I sound, I sound ungrateful from it. So William gave me ten pound note. I ran out. I said, here you go, mate. Gave him ten pound. Tenner or thirty good. Twen- tenner. Oh. And he put his head out the blanket and he just goes, "It was only a tenner. I'm like, I'm gonna buy you these days. How you even buy your meal deal for Tesco?" Oh, but how many how many notes even talking about five pound yeah, how many yeah. notes has that guy received in three months probably it, it does put many. your life in perspective yeah and I was expecting a little bit more I can't lie I gave it to him and I was like there you go mate he looked at it and thanks and then I kind of turned would go back in the car and then I turned around to be like have you seen what I gave, have you seen what I gave you <laughs> <laughs> I did give you a sheet there yeah, no, no. Uh, but look it is, it is what it is some. yeah all the very best uh, it was a cold night and we'd obviously just come off the back of uh, two watch still so it was the least that we could do um, another pet peeve uh, I jumped in the car <laughs> after having the shits all night I suppose is a, is a good way to put it uh, where are you going with that Smith? and I said to William oh mate I was up all night last night I got a sore tummy oh. and he looks at me <laughs> In absolute disgust. I mean, what did you just, what'd just, you just uh, say? A word used by four-year-olds. Tummy. And you know what? I, I can't lie. Do you know what Luke I can says be... from London? I've got a dicky tummy. <laughs> I would use it as well. And you know what? It Quite was possibly only... the wettest thing I've ever heard come out of a guy's mouth. Yeah. I've got a sore tummy. Can you imagine saying that to a girl? Like, oh, I've got a sore tummy. Do that. <laughs> well, and, you know what? I, you five. I completely agree with you, but... In that moment, he said it, and it was probably like reality hit, and I was like, yeah, that is a shit word. And that, yes, please. I looked to you, and well, what else would I use? And he just turned around and was like, stomach? Belly, sore belly, sore stomach. Nah, sore belly, I can't use, because I've actually got a belly. Ah, you actually got a belly. So, but stomach, so, yeah. I, well, you have lost a bit off the belly. What was it? Five kilos, four kilos? You know, just starving myself. Some would say you had four kilos to lose, but... <laughs> Commending you for although, your... although yesterday in the airport, uh, I was in London yesterday, ran for my flight as I got to the gate, my belt burst. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even... Show the people. Has he still got it on? Yeah, I'm actually at loop in, so I'm, I'm suffocating. Oh, yes. Oh, I can't even get it out. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> fucked. So, um, yeah, I did have four kilos to lose. And I'm still on my, I'm still on my losing. Um, maybe we you're, just... You're looking much better, though. Even my mum said it to you. Yeah, she did. People do say it to you. Thank you very much. I can't do that. I'm just going to do the rest of the podcast with my fucking... To get that, in my bockies. <laughs> oh, I can't even do it back up. <laughs> uh, but we'll try and catch up from shit that happened last week, so it's actually relevant. Uh, I suppose into this podcast. Uh, the Masters Golf, which again feels like it was like seven months ago. Just feels scripted. No, I don't think it's scripted, but it, you could have written it. And I said to William... It's like the Formula 1, mate. It's like this year you know what's going to happen. Scripted. You could have put 100 grand on Max to win that this year. No, nah, you just kind of know it. what's going to happen. And, and on the run-up... Oh, no, interestingly, sorry, I know I keep interrupting right. you, but no, interestingly, next year in the Formula 1, you know Audi are obviously in for 2025. Yeah, I saw that. Um, you know they've been testing that engine since 2016. Oh, really? Yeah, they've been engine testing since 2016. You, I think an, an Audi would just look cool. <laughs> nah, I hate the look of Audis, mate. Even that new Audi e Tron looks like a bag of No, but I, th- I just have a feeling that it's going to be like black, sexy. It's going to be like a cool AMG anyway, Patronus. Um, Sorry, yeah. They have been engine testing since 2016, so very high chance that they'll be up there next year. Good. Well, Apparently being... Sainz is Audi next year. God knows. Don't know. There'll be a lot of movement going on in F1 next year. Yeah, there will. I think thanks Lewis, to Lewis. Lewis has broke the mould a little bit, so oh. I think everyone's now looking for an opportunity to move. Um uh, this season we just can't it's wait a very for transitional to... season next season but I expect Audi to be up there near the top yeah but I um, a few weeks even prior to the Masters I said to William Gone, you should put a bet on like, who do you think and he was just like it's just Scotty like, there's no way Scotty's losing like he'd love to have said anybody else but Scotty but he was just like it's going to be Scotty and I was like nah I mean I went left field I said some bollocks like Ricky Fowler or some shit and I was like nah I reckon Ricky Fowler's got so it so consistent mate but I I would have loved to have seen Aberg do it but um, see the whole the, the Jesus stuff though like do you reckon he just oh, what are you talking about Scotty Scheffler no, oh he's mad, mad Christian mad, yeah, mad. Yeah, yeah I don't know if he's is he Christian I don't know he just believes in God in it. he's just mad about Jesus and he just loves Jesus he's yeah. just like everything is for Jesus and if it, if like if I never play golf again like I, I, Thank I know you, Jesus. that like, Jesus is looking down on me it's just like oh, grow up mate if well, you're the masters I'd like, say the same shit if my wife I mean, could just, him, I just, so. just come on what's his wife's name Meredith yeah some bollocks she's <laughs> but harsh, but she a she sounds point. like a, a god following lady, doesn't she? Yeah, she that's what I'm saying. Uh, typical. I think they've been together since high school. You know that? 
Do you know he's about 24 or something? He, he looks like so old. Yeah. But what a fucking golfer. <laughs> uh, we'll carry on to the golf talk. Uh, Loch Lomond, which for those who don't know, it's probably one of the most exclusive golf courses in Scotland. In I think in the UK. In Scotland. In Scot- it's, it's one of the best and most exclusive golf courses in Scotland. Yeah. Um, Arguably the best and most we exclusive. Are, we are fortunate enough to have been invited to play this weekend. I've actually played it a few times. I had a, a friend that used to be a member, so I've played it a few times with him, but... Um, I'm looking forward to seeing your reaction when you get that. If it's a nice day, it'll be 10 out of 10. Yeah, I mean, we've we've had the pleasure of playing some good courses, as we said on the pod already. Um, but what I'm most excited about is fight the golf, get me in the club shop. Because uh, club we shop. go and play, you know, some really nice courses and you see all the big dick swingers and the get out of their Rolls Royces and shit and they're all wearing the Lock Lomond Clobber. That's going to be me, but without the Rolls Royce. Get out your day class. Uh, get out my A30. <laughs> although I can't, it's in the garage still. Whee! Uh, what's in your golf bag? <laughs> uh, golf clubs. Good. Moving on. Uh, about 900 golf balls. <laughs> uh, you're quite good for the golf ball. Yeah. Uh, I know clubs, but just a load of balls. There's no point in buying expensive golf balls, mate, when uh, when you're playing in the soaking wet, pish and rain winter. Yeah. I've, uh, they just disappear. I mean, you say that, but you play with the creme de la creme. I actually don't. I just always think, oh, they're only nine quid a sleeve, like, what's three quid a ball, and then you lose ten. And then you, you think, like, oh. that's fucking thirty quid. <laughs> yeah, it's more than the round I've just played uh, for. Exactly. Um, Anything else we got? Yeah, Margie, how long have we got? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh jackpot. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. You're well, close to that, mic. Yeah, I am, sorry. Uh, I don't know if you have seen it, although I do know you've seen it because we had this conversation in the car. Hmm. Um, but we're getting awfully close to the Olympics. I feel like the Olympics is, becomes a little bit irrelevant, to be honest. I don't really follow it. Why? I don't know, just like the last however many Olympics. But, but until the, okay. London I was fully engaged with, but since Top then... Top three events in the Olympics, what are you watching? 100 metre sprint, obviously. Uh, netball. Oh, fuck off, be honest. No. Um, the sprinting. I like the sprinting. The, the men's swimming. Uh, yeah. 100 meter freestyle. You like the diving, innit? Yeah. You like. <laughs> yeah. 100 meter freestyle. And. Do you know what's always quite good? The triple jump. Yeah, triple jump is good. Yeah. I like the one where they swing the old. Oh, the really? The really? What's that one? The Point Matilda? Jump. Oh, the um, the hammer throw. Yeah, the hammer throw is good, man. Um, the women the, hammer throw is uh, next level. The the four hundred meter relay is always good as well. Uh, but they the, always fucking drop that baton thing. Aye, uh, yeah. I uh, imagine that's you. We trained for like your whole life for that so one moment. Like, what a mad! Just like, why can't just tie five each other? Why do they need to have a band? <laughs> just like primary school ever again. Fucks it off all the time. Tag, tag, tag. Um, but the reason why I say it is. I saw the Olympic basketball team got oh. announced for America. Yes, yeah. That's cheat code, isn't it? Have you seen it? Draymond Green, Easy Money Sniper. LeBron, which is, which is... Steph Curry, Devin Booker. Like, you're <laughs> actually taking the piss. I know. Like, name, name another sport that has world domination like that. It's funny you say that. I've got a wee list here. <laughs> ah, have you seen it? Well, I'll, I'll, give you one, I'll give you one that I actually thought of off my own back. And I imagine Japan for sumo. Maybe that's racist, and it's not actually Japanese. It could be maybe Chinese or something. Yeah, but whatever the sumos are from, that that country. They dominate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got one? Mm, I want to say like, what's the thing where they do like they ski and then they shoot? Um, cross country skiing, and I had, I know the answer and then they to that. Shoot. Oh no, is that cost country? It's I always think it like could the be. Nordic countries that are always yeah. good at that. Well, that is Norway. Norway do, do dominate. Never a Spanish guy that's like. Uh, <laughs> oh, that, that's it. Thanks, Mark. Um, there's never like a, a Jose coming through. Yeah. We have Jose in lane four. <laughs> Jose Inglésis <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, coming nah. over the mountain now. Do you know what I mean? They're always dead last. There's never like. Yeah. It's always like fucking. But look, thanks for turning up. Hendrik Schwansen Steichen, <laughs> who's like, do you know what I mean? Leading, he's, six, he's, six, he's six mountains ahead of the rest. So you know it is, I mean? you are right, because Norway does. does Where did the gun thing come out of it? I don't know. Yeah. Who's doing that? Cross country ski all that way with a gun on your back, and then you need to pull the gun out. Right, let's put them in Afghan and, and boom, boom, boom. we'll see who comes and out swinging. Who gets a medal for that? No yeah. idea. Um, but I do have some countries that um, overpower in their sport. So. Take a wild guess on table tennis. Oh, China. Correct. Um, 400 meter swim. Mm. USA? 
Correct. The men's uh, USA swim team have never, never, never lost 400 meter swim. Well, no wonder Michael Phelps won about nine medals that year. He done yeah. the Olympics. Nine gold medals. Speed skating. You know what country? Mm, China? Netherlands. Ah. Uh, this can he be an Olympic sport. Marbles. The things you've always got in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Just your nuts, mate. <laughs> <laughs> marbles marbles aye well, how do you play marbles I don't know but I, I used to play them when I was a kid apparently there's a country extremely dominant like conquers <laughs> <laughs> the Germans are good at conquers uh, right anything else are you it's the Germans for marbles oh the Germans um, for marbles yeah oh, and then Weird. again we'll just recap the week before we push on uh, we had the am I allowed to call as an Englishman am I allowed to call it old firm or is that um not a nice way to put it. Uh, no, it's the old firm, yeah. Okay, well, you had the Glasgow old firm. Um, for those coming at me for how I pronounce it, it's simply because they're the home team. It was Rangers v Celtic. Apparently, I get told off for saying whatever one first, but it was officially Rangers v Celtic. <laughs> the um, only stipulation I would have about the entire game is that the referee's a Rangers fan. Yeah. And I understand that it's very difficult in a <sighs> country like Scotland where there's maybe 20 refs 10 refs or whatever to say you can't ref Rangers if you're a Celtic fan or a Rangers fan and you can't ref Celtic if you're a Rangers or a Celtic fan <laughs> and that should be the same in the Premier League as well well it is illegal in the Premier League right, you can't okay. ref your own team in the Prem okay although there was that thing about was it Norwich Nottingham Forest Not this week Forest, there was a Luton fan who was the VAR yeah, there was a Luton fan who was VAR yeah I seen that which was garbage but um, it sh you shouldn't be able to ref an old firm yeah, any game or a Celtic or a, or a Celtic like you should be able they should be able to figure out a neutral a neutral ref, ref just to but oversee. Listen, it. I thought the ref done well. To be honest. Yeah, I think he got. Uh, there was a lot of big calls to make in that game. I thought he got it. Um, for those who didn't see it, uh, by half time it was what two nil to Celtic. Two 0 Celtic at um, half time. Finished three three. So finished three three. Crazy second half. If you've not seen it, penalties I recommend going back to watch uh, the it's highlights. Good, good game. Uh, were you talking about penalties? Although weirdly, when I was watching the game, there was a guy sat in front of me with half a Rangers and half a Celtic top on, sewed together. Got to have been a dare or something. He must have been. Imagine walking about town with that on. He must have been on a stag or like something must have been going on me. It had half a Rangers top and half a Celtic top sewn together. I was like. Ah. But he can't be either a Rangers or a Celtic fan. I don't know what he just wouldn't. Yeah, yeah so mental. Uh, talking about football and talking about penalties. In fact, there's two claims here. I've got here. So, the first one, Chelsea played. Oh, it's Palmer penalty. I don't even remember who they played. Newcastle, I think it was. Uh, they were four nil up. Um, no, three nil up. Cole Palmer scored three. No, no. Aye, maybe. And then they got a penalty. Then they, everyone else just fighting over who took the penalty. Cole Palmer got up from being injured, just took the ball and took the penalty and scored. Yeah, well, they're all fighting over it. Two of them were pathetic. That Thiago Silva got involved. Then one of them walked off with the ball, thinking he was the fucking the man. And then Cole Palmer got up, literally walked up to just him. Just shows you though, doesn't it? That would never happen to Man City. That would never happen to anybody else. Just shows you the division that must be in that team. Yeah, there's a lot of egos in that Chelsea team, um, and I think a lot of them. Cole Palmer's obviously. I'm um, actually calling him Cold Palmer. That's I'll terrible. Cole Palmer though, I'll, like leave it. He's, he apparently wanted to leave Man City for two years. Bad boy, man. Yeah, he's a he's a bad man. I like him. And then we had the Aston Villa penalty shootout in the Europa League again. It will probably come to me in a minute who they played, but. Um, you, nah, I don't think so. It's, it's, anyway, it doesn't matter. But you had right. Martinez in goal, yeah. who's an absolute shit house. And as a West Brom fan, uh, it kills me to say even talk it, about yeah. them being in the semi final. But I he had a booking in the during the ninety minutes of play, and then he's obviously you know he's up to his usual antics as he was in the World Cup. Got another booking. Uh, got another booking during the penalty shootout. He actually thought he was going to get sent off. But the ref thought he was going to get sent off. And it was Douglas Luiz that I think ran over and was just like, are you actually can he send him off? It uh, just All cards points. reset during the penalty shootout. How yeah. mad is that? So you can't actually get sent off? Nah. And then actually... So effectively you could get three yellow cards yeah. in a game. And there was quite a lot happening again this weekend because obviously we filmed it last week. So now we've actually got more shit to talk about. There was the Coventry versus Man United game up the Coventry. Again, as a West Brom fan. One of the best that. moments in FA Cup history ruined by VAR. Correct. Yeah. Coventry got one in like the ninth, ninth minute of added minute. time. Yeah, I swear to God, I was watching that game. Man United were 3 0 up and I went to sleep and I woke up. And it was three each. Mm. I was like, how has this even happened? Then I watched the last few minutes and he scores that goal. Magic moment. 90 plus ruined. 7. Ruined. Because they do a VAR check and his toenails offside. Actually, the line 
I think there's like come out there's a photo and the line is actually over the foot so he's onside but anyway regardless a b- b- fucking bullshit but there's got but, to be a margin of error in those cameras so yeah but they're not in line the, the angle is a like, margin of error the angle of the line the, it, like in any scientific thing there's a margin of error yeah. so like when you buy a kitchen there's a tolerance on the kitchen because so you've got like a 5 mil tolerance or a 3 mil tolerance because they know that it's not it can't, nothing can be absolutely bang on perfect so VR must have a margin of error so why do they never factor that in yeah so if no, it's a right. margin of error of 5 mil or 10 mil mm. why do they never factor that in when making decisions no you're right it can it can't be bang on perfect it's impossible no but I actually think what should happen is there should be a camera that is, can be controlled or it just picks up the last man and that should be always in line because that's the only way you're going to get it accurate because the last man is actually 20 yards away to the left and the offside angle that's a magic pick moment in FA Cup history ruined can you imagine yeah. what that means for Coventry going through the FA Cup final money wise yeah like everything about it everything. the fans it was the biggest game in Coventry's yeah, history so, and, then, and, and then thingy at the end Anthony giving the Coventry fans that yeah dickhead Just, we're up 3-0 Dickhead. Actually, he's a twat it. though. I actually, I actually, actually did very much. Actually, we'll come off the football Guy's on probably three hundred grand a week, and he's given Coventry fans a year. Yeah, he's probably on more than all the Coventry players put together. Yeah, facts. Um, we got asked by uh, Mr. Josh, who is an avid supporter of the channel. So shouts at you, Mr. Josh. A great name. Um, but he actually wanted us to talk a little bit about our TVs and movies that we're watching. So we are running out of time. We're going to jump into it what quick. Kind of we've got? <laughs> what kind of tellies we've got? What kind of tellies we got? I've got one of them big juicy ones. But uh, the shout outs as well, we do just get the same people kind of commenting and showing support, which is always appreciated. But there's no point in keep shouting out the no, same no, people. No, no, so no. we're going to have a wee break on the old shout outs. Um, but those that are watching, please do make comments or listening, I should say, because I do want to know how ask, it is. Are you asking me what I've been watching on the telly? Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm. come back to that in a oh, second. Okay. But if you are listening or watching, just find some time to just drop a comment because I'm actually intrigued as to know, is, are you listening? Do you watch us? Do you put us on the telly? Are you yeah. on the phone? Like, just, comment, subscribe, isn't it? Yeah, all of that. Uh, but yeah, what did you watch as a kid? We'll jump in with first. Mm. What was your channel of choice? Dexter's Laboratory, Cartoon Network. Ah, oh, it's Cartoon Network. You're Dexter's a dork. Dexter's Laboratory. See, I was a Nickelodeon kid. Oh, uh, what you were watching, like, uh, Keenan and, and Kel. Yeah, oh, I like... Keenan and Kel, love Keenan and Kel. Yeah, who loves our soda? Kel loves our soda. Exactly. Um, yeah, I was a Nickelodeon kid. What was that? Was it... Hey Arnold? Arthur? Arthur was like ITV Arthur. or some CITV or some bollocks, wasn't it? That? Hey, Arthur! Yeah. And then yeah. Hey Arnold was the guy with the big mass feet. Yeah, football head. Um, and then Rugrats, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Simpsons. And that was what you watched. I never really was into... Um, Kim Possible. Watched a bit of that. Fuck off. Mm-hmm. Aye. Well, uh, nonsense. Dexter's Laboratory was the best, though. Crash Bandicoot. Was that? No, it was a game. That was a game, aye. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Nah. <laughs> uh, I was just a, a, a Cartoon Network guy. Um, movies. You watch any good movies? Is My there favorite any... film's a big short. I remember, yeah. watched it recently, actually. Very good. What was the last thing you went to a cinema to watch? <laughs> Fuck knows. Do you think the cinema's dying? I can't fall asleep, mate. I can't. Yeah. I can't. I can't watch. Just so dark. I just, so I just comfy seats. Especially those big Odin ones. I'm just like, <laughs> if I twenty minutes in, I'm like half asleep. Yeah, but is there anything you would want to see in a Or you, you, you? My brother-in-law um, asked me to watch Dune too in cinema, uh, um, which I nearly went to, but I just I, I can't stay awake, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can fall asleep. So it's point. It's actually pointless me paying to go yeah. to cinema because I honestly. Every single time I fall asleep. Even if I watch a film in the house, mate, I fall asleep. Yeah. I couldn't tell you the last time I went to a cinema. But uh, do you think the cinema is dying? No. No? No, nah, there'll always be a place for cinema. I'm not sure, you know. Yeah. Is there anything else as a kid that used to be super cool and there was like no chance of it dying that has now died? Any shops? I've got a couple. Woolworths. All right, Woolworths. I actually stole a sweet from Woolworths. I think it's the only thing I've ever stolen in my life, and it still sits in me. I'm sorry to Woolworths woken for uh, stealing a did sweet. You see the guy, the Woolworths guy in Australia, getting his knuckles wrapped because mm-hmm. he took home eight point six million dollars, and like they were like fired and fucking loads of their staff. Anyway, um, what else? Was that shot? JJB. JJB was goated. They sold. Yeah. They sold everything for every sport in there. Snooker cues, dartboards, football boots, <laughs> fucking everything. Yeah, I had a. Uh, it was actually this JJB, Christmas. I had trampolines. I, I had my there. dad's uncle give me my Christmas presents in a JJB bag that he's obviously just had in the attic, and he came down. Like, that JJB, was the best present I got JJB all Christmas. Vouchers. The J- <laughs> 
<laughs> expires in shop 15 years ago. HMV. Yeah. Uh, wait, they're still in... I don't know how they're still a thing. Uh, who's buying CDs? Uh, exactly. I don't know. Uh, Toys R Us. That's still a thing, though. No, it's not. Is it not? Nah, Toys R Us is gone. Toys R Us was good, though. Um, but what are you actually watching on the t- actual television? Because I think that was the main um, question. I'll give everyone a wee bit of a cheat code. No, I've forgotten the name of it. Great. Oh, it's came back to me. It's called Fringe. It's a sci-fi thing me and my dad used to watch when I was a kid. 10 out of 10. I mean, oh, so it's old. Really cool. It's an old one. But it's the best. Um, I was started watching that Red Eye the other night. Have you seen that? I, I started it to, last night. Uh, fucking mental. Starts, it's quite good, eh? It's like that hijack that has Idris Elba on. Have you seen that? Aye, 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 aye. It's quite good. It's a similar thing to that. I but don't know where... to, like, smooth talk four hijackers to land the plane. Yeah. Man like Idris. All right, Idris. Big I just killed your like 007 career right there. Yeah, maybe. Um, but have you seen that thing unlocked on Netflix? Where they just release no. it's in a prison. Oh, I've seen a couple yeah, of episodes, but and, I turned it off after that. I couldn't get into it. Yeah, well I just I just watch it for the prison fights to be honest. Oh. Uh but they basically say if you're well behaved, you can just run about all day in the Tell thing. me, did they eventually shut the shut them shut them back in? I've not finished it. I oh. again I got I, I think I did a bit of view and I turned it off. Um obviously you got the Man City thing, which is non I can't really get into it. Too many games in one episode. Yeah, like I think we said that episode. in another pod, but I, I can't get with it. Um, I was on the flight yesterday. I watched the latest season of Breakpoint. Break, Breakpoint. Yeah. yeah, I love how that's filmed, and same with the golf. I've actually finished the golf Full one. Swing. Full swing, very very good, and the tennis one, very very good. Highly like those. The Man City one's just not enough time spent around the players and their lives and their families and how it affects them. Yeah, but that's what people want to see. very club focused. Yeah, we want to see them at home. We want to see them driving. We want to see the behind the scenes stuff. But Man City actually have a very, very good like YouTube channel and effectively it's the YouTube channel. Released as a Netflix special. Yeah, which I never understood. Yeah, exactly. They probably paid Ireland off. With the Netflix money. Yeah, we'll sign we'll sign Harland for you, but in return... We want Netflix money. We want all your YouTube content. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the Netflix sports stuff is always really good, but besides that, I haven't seen anything. Right. Show stopping. Anything else? What can we call it? I think we should maybe call it where we're at now. We've still got a lot to go through, but I feel like we start going into things, it's just going to be... Right. We're going to be here for 10 so hours. Let's so. take quarter past now, anyway. Hey, guys, thank you. That was episode eight. See you in a couple of weeks' time. Peace. Thanks, Mark.